In this video, I will show you how to integrate Storybook with Pandas CSS to help you visualize your design system components with ease. Go ahead to set up a vid project with Panda and Storybook installed, as you can see here in the package JSON. In the TS config file, I've also set the base URL to dot, just to make the imports look cleaner. Because we have the base URL set up, I've installed the vid TS config parts plugin, and I've gone ahead to add that to the plugins just before calling the React one. Finally, in the preview TS file, I've also imported the layer CSS that is required for Panda to work. If we take a look at the index.css file, we see it contains the layer CSS. With all that setup done, let's get started by creating a button component and creating a story for it. We'll start by creating a recipe for the button component. Setting the base styles, we'll add a key called base in here and provide the pretty much base styles for a button component. Setting the display to inline flex, align items, um, setting the font properties, and the cursor pointer. When the button is disabled, Panda CSS provides a condition called underscore disabled. Now with this condition, we can apply an opacity of 0.4 just to make the button look a little bit faded out. Next, we'll define the variant for the button component. Now the first variant we'll define is called variant. Of course, that's a tongue twist. And in this variant, we're going to provide two options, outline and solid. For the outline variant, we're going to do something interesting here. Setting the border width to one pixel and then changing the border color based off of the color mode. So here we say by default, it is grade dot 200, but in the dark mode, it's going to be grade dot 700. And we apply a similar treatment to the color as well. The solid variant will apply a BG of blue 500 and a color of white. The next variant we're going to define is size. For the size options, we'll provide two options, medium and large. For the medium size, we'll provide a padding styles, mean height and font size properties. In the large one, we pretty much use the same styles but increase the number of course so it looks larger. Now the last variant we're going to create is called shape. Shape variants will come in three different options, rounded, peel and square. When in square, we don't apply any border radius because by default the border radius is set to zero. And then we provide two options, rounded and peel, which pretty much applies a small border radius for rounded and a full border radius for the peel shape button. The next thing we'll do is to provide default variants, which says when you use the button recipe by default, it's going to come with a size of medium and a shape of rounded. We're going to skip out the variant for now. With the button recipe now completed, let's go ahead to build out the button component. We'll start by inferring the variant properties from the button recipe by using the recipe variant prop generic type. Next, we'll define the button properties. And finally, we'll define the button component by splitting out all of the recipe props and applying the class name on the button element as needed. Now, with that done, let's go ahead to create a storybook for the button component. Go ahead to create a button.stories.tsx file. And in this file, we have imported the button component and attached that to the component metadata for storybook. To visualize the outline variant of the button, we'll pass in the args property T in the story, providing it a variant of outline and a children of button. Switching over to storybook, you can see that we've got the outline story here and that renders the outline button. That's great. Now what is more exciting is if you hit the D key or click the add-on panel right here, you get to see the controls for the button components. And exactly as we've defined it, we've got variant of outline and solid. And the cool part here is you can switch between them to see what the component looks like in those variants. I've also got the size variant here, so you can click medium and large to see what that looks like. Same for the shape variant, click in through rounded, peel, or square. Now this is the awesome power storybook. Let's go ahead to define another story for the button. Let's say we want to visualize the solid variant of the button component. We'll create an export named solid and provide the args passing in the variant of solid and children of button again. Switching over to storybook, we can see that we have a new story here for solid and we can click that to see what the outline looks like and what the solid looks like, which is awesome. Now these are somewhat basic examples for the button component. Let's say we want to create a more complex example say a button that includes an icon on the left side. Let's see how we can define that in Storybook. I'll create a new story called with icon. 
Passing in some basic args for the button variant of solid and a children this time we'll call it share. Next we'll define the render function which renders the button component and includes a custom share icon from Lucid React. For this icon we are setting its width to 1 em. We do that because we want the icon to match the font size of the button component. And then finally we wrap the children with a span within the args. Um, this is helpful for translation purposes. Switching over to storybook again we click on the width icon story. And here we can see that we've got the share icon and the text looking really nice. The great thing about this as well is we can always use the add-on controls to control the variants and see what this looks like across multiple variants, again which looks pretty amazing. If you take a look at the button recipe, you notice that we have dark mode styles defined for the border color and the color in the outline variant. Now the next question that might come to mind is how do I visualize this in storybook? How do I easily see what this looks like in dark mode? Let me show you how. In the storybook main.ts file, let's add in the storybook add-on themes. This would enable a theme switcher within storybook to allow us to switch between light and dark mode. In the preview ts file, we'll start by bringing in a function called with theme by class name which comes from the storybook add-on themes. Next, we'll set up the decorator that applies this function and allows us to define the class names for the light and dark themes, setting the default to light. And then finally, we'll would import the React renderer from storybook React to get things working correctly for TypeScript. Once you restart and reload storybook, you see a theme switcher show up at the top bar. Now this theme switcher allows us to switch between the light and dark themes. You notice that once we switch to the dark theme, the button component somewhat responds to the dark theme, but the background for the storybook still remains light. And let's fix that by adding some global CSS in the panda config. In the panda config, we would add in a global CSS property to the config, styling the body element to include a new background of white in the light mode and in the dark mode we want that to be gray 900 and we'll do the same for the color as well so that things can look legible. And if we switch back to storybook, you notice that the dark mode now looks as designed, allowing us to switch between the light and the dark theme so easily. Using this approach, you can build and maintain design systems with ease with Panda CSS and Storybook. Give it a shot and let us know what you think.